The recession is over. We're looking at potentially the first major improvement really since the recession began. The recession is over. The economy is expanding and we are creating jobs. This is not a recovery, it's merely a cover up. It's not a recovery. The politicians in this country bankrupted us. What should the role of government be in a free society? Free society. So why is there a major national debt crisis on the horizon? When U.S. debt growth started to outpace our economic growth, that's when the problem crossed an invisible line into a coming crisis. When U.S. debt growth started to be funded by the Federal Reserve creating currency, the problem crossed the point of no return. The Fed could then come in QE3, QE4, QE5, QE6, whatever they want to do. Now the Fed is in a situation where they are damned if they do, damned if they don't. You see, private GDP hasn't risen in 14 years. GDP has been rising because of two factors, government spending and government manipulation. The borrowing and spending not only takes capital away from the private economy, it creates demand for an unsustainable workforce. So much so that our economy is now dependent on the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates low, pump money into our stock market, and fund government spending through quantitative easing programs. The perception that the standard of living has increased in our nation since we left the gold standard has appeared to increase, but we believe this to be due to technology and a massive debt expansion. I'm Stanley Johnson. I've got a four bedroom house in a great community. Like my car? It's new. How do I do it? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. If you look at the quality of our lives, it has greatly decreased. 40 years ago, it took one income earner to raise a family of four. And we're not talking about a white collar job, we're talking about blue collar jobs that used to be the backbone of America. Today it takes two income earners who are heavily indebted with credit cards, student loans, auto, and mortgage financing. Most of this debt, by the way, actually encouraged by our government through postponed payments, deductions, loan programs, and other incentives in order to keep you spending and working hard. It's all free! The real quality of life can be measured in our wealth today. Most people save in dollars. When you look at the value of a silver dollar versus a Federal Reserve note, it really puts things into perspective. In 1971, a silver dollar, or a dollar, was able to purchase roughly three gallons of gasoline. However, today a fiat dollar can only purchase one-fourth of a gallon of gasoline, and a silver dollar, because of the silver in it, can purchase over seven gallons of gasoline. The U.S. Federal Reserve note has lost 91% of its value against gasoline while at the same time real money that is not created out of thin air has actually increased in real value. When America began our government cost every citizen $20 a year. Today it charges each of us an average of $10,000 per year. It took our nation 206 years, 39 presidents, to reach our first official $1 trillion in national debt. The second trillion took four years. The last trillion took eight months. No! Because today, Americans of different beliefs came together again. In the final hours before our government would have been forced to shut down, leaders in both parties reached an agreement that will allow our small businesses to get the loans they need. Now, as far as our government cutting expenses, very unlikely. Even though the news of the day is that we averted a government shutdown with $38 billion in cuts, we have to remember, the agreed cuts are based off of a budget that was never enacted. In fact, total approved spending is actually larger than it was in 2010, by about $300 billion. So our government just agreed to spend and borrow more. Therefore, in Washington, it's considered a cut. Now, looking at this $38 billion of supposed cuts, it is barely a drop in the ocean. $38 billion is 1% of the projected 2011 budget. It is around a quarter of a percent of the official national debt. And when looking at how much new debt we are going to add to our official national debt in 2011, $38 billion is only 2.4% of the new borrowing for 2011. In order to be taken seriously, we need a $1 trillion real cut in spending. Remember, it is this decade that our spending will accelerate as baby boomers enter their entitlement programs. 
this decade, according to the leaked cable from the Saudi Arabia embassy, that Saudi Arabia will peak in oil production. WikiLeaks, they're saying that U.S. officials think that Saudi Arabia is overpromising on its capacity for supplying oil. And it is this decade that China will fully and completely internationalize the Chinese renminbi. This decade will see tectonic shifts and systemic changes in our global economy. Already our debt to GDP is close to 100%. Our debt obligations to GDP is around 500%. Clearly, the need for constant deficits and debt expansion to keep the illusion going is going to likely end early in this decade. Now, the old saying is that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. In our opinion, this is true. So with this knowledge, we would say it is pretty important to make sure that you're not poor going into these massive changes this decade. Did we mention our debt is like an adjustable rate mortgage? That's right, our debt isn't fixed which means currently we're enjoying historically low interest rates, paying an average of just over 2% for interest on our debt. So what would happen if interest rates rose? I mean, is it possible? Well, the world's largest bond fund manager sure thinks so, not only selling U.S. Treasuries in 2011, but recently announcing he is shorting them. The economic debt tsunami is not far now. With 70 million baby boomers, a generation that dwarfs the generations before it and after it, is ready to enroll in America's entitlement programs. These programs are set to skyrocket in payees, while at the same time income for these programs will decline due to the generation behind the baby boomers being smaller and the baby boomers no longer working and paying as much into the system. Soon, mandatory spending will consume the entire income of the United States. The U.S. has two choices, default or default through inflation, which seems to be the choice already taken. With QE2 now responsible for purchasing 70% of U.S. Treasuries, the Fed will have to continue with QE3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and possibly even more. And uh, we may drop 10, 15 percent, and then QE3 will come, and QE4, QE5, QE6. No. So uh, you went all, what did you get to me about QE8? I don't think anyone talked about QE8 yet, Mark. Uh, but so I, I made a mistake. I was meant to say QE18.